Hi everyone, welcome back to Microeconomics. Okay, I'm going to be covering part 7 today on price adjustment process. Right, this is a part which is very, very crucial when it comes to demand supply, okay, because it's basically the yardstick, okay, your foundation for forming a very, very strong economics analysis. Okay, so you need to make sure you have this part included in every single demand and supply essay, all right, uh, because it is seriously that vital. Without this part, you are basically doomed, all right. So, firstly, I'm going to go through change in demand now, go through change in supply. Okay, I'm not going to go through the elasticity concepts here, okay, because I don't want it, I don't want it to get very too confusing. Okay, I want you to first understand the fundamentals of how you should be writing first. Okay, the elasticity part comes in as a form of evaluation later on. Alright, so firstly, let's say there's a change in taste and preference of a good. Okay, for example, the fidget spinners, right? Back in 2015, 2016, right, fidget spinners were a huge thing. Okay, there was a surge in demand. Okay, so let's say there's a change in preference. Okay, everyone is like, wow, this veggie spinner thing looks so fun. Okay, so everyone wants to buy it. Okay, there will be an increase in the demand for it. Okay, as a result, demand curve shifts rightwards from D1 to D2. Okay, as seen over here in highlighted in green. Okay, you notice that the demand curve shifts outwards from D1 to D2. So just remember when it comes to increase in demand or supply, the curve will always shift outwards or rightwards. Okay, so in this case, it shifts rightwards for demand curve supply same thing it will also shift rightwards key you'll see later on so as you can see there was an increase in quantity from q1 to q2 and an increase in price from p1 to p2 all right so you always have to state assumptions okay, in econs okay, econs is all about assumptions so assuming that supply remains constant okay what actually happens is that at the original price p1 okay quantity demander exceeds quantity supply hence creating a shortage okay so i want you to look at look at this graph with me real quick okay at this top right hand corner of the screen you notice that when there was an increase in demand okay from d1 to d2 original price was over here so this is p1 okay it's it's not exactly in line okay but it's somewhere there okay this is p1 and it actually extends out here, right? When there is a new increase in the demand. Okay, so at this original price P1, okay, you notice that there are two quantities I can identify, okay, using the different curves. Firstly, where does P1 intersect with supply curve? It interacts at this green part over here, right? Which means that this is the quantity supply. Okay, on the other hand, where does my new demand curve intersect with P1? It is indicated by this red part over here. So this is my new quantity demanded. So can you see that from this, quantity demanded actually exceeds quantity supplied? Right? Because this is quantity demanded. This is quantity supplied. So you can see that quantity demanded is actually more than quantity supplied. As a result, it creates a shortage as indicated by this yellow part over here. So this yellow part is basically my shortage. Alright, so as a result of this shortage, okay, consumers will apply an upward pressure on prices. Okay, this is the reason why prices actually increase. So you'll notice that if you want to draw the arrows, okay, the quantity supplied will actually increase upwards here. And quantity demanded, okay, will actually fall. Why? Because some people cannot afford the good anymore. So it will actually fall. Okay, the arrow is a bit uh, not very good, okay, but you can roughly see. Right, so it will fall to meet at this new price over here, which is otherwise known as your P2. Okay, so the shortage will cause the prices to rise and hence quantity demanded decreases while quantity supply increases, okay, as I've already indicated through the arrows. Right, so this is really the main bulk of price adjustment process, especially for demand. Okay, take note of this part, go and play back this part as many times as you can, okay, just so it's really drilled in your head, okay, because you have to write this. So, as I was saying, okay, when quantity demanded equals to quantity supply, so this is the new one, okay, your market reaches a new equilibrium, okay, with a higher equilibrium price as stated here, P2, and a higher equilibrium quantity, Q2, which is over here. Okay, so this is the new higher equilibrium quantity and the higher equilibrium um, price, okay, that the market has reached as a result of the price mechanism, okay, this is the price adjustment process. Okay, so conversely, when there is a fall in demand, same thing, a surplus will occur, and hence there will be a fall in the equilibrium price and the quantity. So it's just essentially moving the curve backwards. Okay, that is what happens when there is a fall in demand. Okay, so just take note of this, right? So this is change in demand, very, very simple. Okay, next we want to change in supply. Let's say there is a change in technology. Okay, technology has advanced over the years, right? It's getting better and better. So there is an increase in supply as a result, okay, because of higher productivity, higher efficiency. Okay, the supply curve will shift rightwards from S1 to S2. Same thing. Okay, price and quantity will 
change. In this case, price drops, quantity will rise. But you notice that my curve shifted outwards from S1 to S2 this way. Alright, so just take note, rightwards as well when supply increases. Okay, now we go back to our diagram again. Okay, same thing. Okay, assuming that demand remains constant this time. Okay, demand never changed, right? So assuming demand remains constant at the original price P1, quantity supplied will now be more than quantity demanded. Hence, it creates a surplus. Okay, this one is a no-brainer, right? When quantity supply is more than demand, it creates a surplus, no doubt. Okay, so as you can see over here, okay, at original price P1, Okay, you draw a line out, okay, P1. Okay, there are two different quantities over here. So, basically, the supply one is your quantity supply over here. And then, quantity demanded is the one that it intersects with the demand curve. Quantity demanded over here. Okay, so this is, likewise, okay, quantity supplied is more than your quantity demanded. Okay, so it creates a surplus. Okay, so likewise, producers are willing to accept a lower price to clear the surplus. Okay, all producers want to clear the surplus. Okay, and hence, quantity demanded will increase, while your quantity supplied will um, decrease instead. Okay, so likewise, they will move downwards here. Okay, to actually intersect at this new equilibrium price, P2. Alright, so moving on, okay, we have got when quantity demanded equals to quantity supplied, okay, what happens is that the market will reach a, oops, sorry about that, market reaches a new equilibrium, okay, with a lower equilibrium price and higher equilibrium quantity, okay, so this is the price mechanism working once again, right, whereby you notice that the price has actually fallen, the quantity has actually increased, okay, as a result. So this one is always what happens, okay, when there's an increase in supply, okay, your price will usually fall, why? Right? Because the producers are willing to accept lower price to clear the surplus, okay, but at the same time, the quantity has increased because the quantity supply in the market has actually increased. So the overall quantity, the equilibrium quantity in the whole market has increased. So conversely, when there's a fall in supply, okay, definitely there will be a shortage, okay, producers are unwill un unable to produce enough, okay, and hence there will be a rise in equilibrium price and a fall in quantity, so it will be the opposite. Alright, so what happens, okay, if there's a change in both demand and supply? Okay, so when there's a change in both demand and supply, you need to take note of certain things, okay, to determine the impact, okay, on equilibrium price and quantity, you have to look at the extent of each change, okay, because you notice, ah, uh, when there is an increase in demand, both my price and quantity has actually increased. But when there's an increase in supply, the price has actually dropped and the quantity has increased. So you notice that one thing remains constant. Quantity has actually increased. But how about my price? Okay, so that is where you need to factor in. Okay, let's say if there's a few cases, higher demand, higher supply, or the effect of both. Okay, so when there's a higher demand, okay, more than the supply, Okay, let's say it increases more than supply. Uh, we're looking at, we're stating assumption here. Okay, in reality, um, demand could be rising, supply could be falling. Okay, you have to look at the context of the question. Okay, over here, I'm giving you hypothetical, simple examples. Okay, if equilibrium quantity increases, your equilibrium price will also increase. Correct? So we're all certain on this, right? But let's say if there's a higher supply, more than the demand, equilibrium quantity increases, equilibrium price will decrease. So you notice that overall, okay, if you combine these two, okay, increase in higher demand, higher supply, that means increase in demand, increase in supply, okay, both of them will result in an equilibrium quantity increasing, but the equilibrium price will actually remain uncertain. So that is where you need to look at the two cases, okay, is your increase in demand more than the increase in supply, or is the increase in supply more than the increase in demand? Okay, this is what will determine, okay, the effect on your price, okay, whether overall did your price actually increase or did your price actually fall. Okay, so I'll give you one example over here. Okay, case one, let's say increase in demand more than increase in, in supply. Okay, you notice that the equilibrium price will increase. Okay, so if you look at the graph over here, okay, the dotted lines, okay, is basically the hypothetical situation. Okay, if the demand has increased more than the increase in supply. Okay, so notice that both of them actually shift rightwards. Okay, supply increases, demand also increases. But if you notice, okay, the original price and quantity was over here. Okay, I will highlight over here in blue. Okay, this is the original price. This is the original quantity. Okay, assuming at the new demand and the new supply. So you just ignore the previous two. Look at the, the two new ones. I will highlight in red over here. Uh, there we go. Okay, so supply and demand one. Supply one, demand one. You notice that the price is now higher 
but the quantity has also increased. So quantity remains the same. Okay, whatever it is, the effect on quantity is they will always increase. But we're looking at price. So you notice that price has actually increased. Okay, on the other hand, if the increase in supply is more than the increase in demand, okay, you will look at it the same way again. The original one is P1 and then Q1, correct? But the new one is where S2 intersects D2. Okay, it's the new supply curve intersecting the new demand curve. That will be over here, P2, Q2. So notice that price has actually dropped if the increase in supply is more than the increase in demand. Okay, so in this both case, both of these cases, okay, they both increase. Okay, demand and supply both increase. But you notice that the effect on price was actually different. So this is what you need to investigate. So what I reckon is you always draw these two cases when it comes to the essay question. It will help you to actually see clearer, okay, what the effect on price is. Right, so overall, okay, exam requirements for this part, okay, you just need to understand how a change in demand or supply okay, can have impact on the equilibrium price and quantity. This one is very, very simple. Okay, we have already stated just now. Right, this is the simple cases, okay? Understand how to write the price adjustment process in a neat and orderly causal link fashion. Okay, so like I've already, basically this whole um, video, okay, should show you what causal links are like. Okay, you notice the arrows, right? So those are basically causal links. So when you actually write it in your essay, just convert those arrows into words, into transition words. Okay, so the most important part of this whole part is to come up with conclusive results okay, on the change in equilibrium price and quantity based on the question requirements. Okay, so it could be an increase in demand but a fall in supply. So you really have to go and plot it out and then always take into account one case whereby let's say one of them increases by a more than proportional amount as compared to the other and likewise for the other case if it's less than proportionate. So by doing so, you're able to conclude okay, and then state very clearly whether your equilibrium price has actually increased or decreased. Okay, there are also cases whereby your equilibrium quantity could be uncertain. Okay, so make sure you go and take note. Okay, because let's say if there's an increase in demand, your 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 quantity will increase. But if there's a fall in supply at the same time, okay, your quantity will drop. So in order to determine the extent, okay, likewise you have to go and plot out the four different cases as well. Okay, or either that the two different cases. Okay, because in this case maybe your price remains constant. Okay, the both of them price will actually increase instead. Alright, so make sure you go and look at this part. Okay, usually I recommend that you always draw out the two cases. Usually there's only the two different cases. Either your price is uncertain or quantity is uncertain. So you just draw out like what I've, I stated in the slide right before this. Okay, go and draw it out. Okay, and then the rest should be fine. Okay, then after this count out conclusive results on your price and quantity and the rest should be uh, easy peasy. Okay, so if not, if you did enjoy this video, okay, be sure to give it a thumbs up. Okay, if you need more help, okay, leave a question in the comment section. Okay, I'll try and answer them as quickly as possible. Okay, so just leave a like on this video. It really does help me out a lot. Okay, in the next few videos to come, I'll see if I can cover more on graphs, okay, as well as your price elasticity, which will also have an effect, okay, on the extent, okay, to which quantity or price may have increased or decreased. All right, so if you did enjoy this video, okay, um... Uh, be sure to stay tuned for more, okay, because there will be more coming up, okay, such as your impacts, your strategies, your policies, okay, when it comes to your demand and supply part of the syllabus. Okay, so if not, I'll see you guys in the next one. Till then, peace out.